Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Hello, this is Living Hope Church Online, sponsored by Living Hope Church Broadcast Media. I am your host, Pastor Dr. Kemi Atanda Hilary, the General Overseer of Living Hope Church. Today is Tuesday, 20 August 2024, and today's topic is Enjoying the faithfulness of God. Enjoying the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God is seen on every page of the Bible. However, although we all know that God is always faithful, this is something that we sometimes find difficult to believe when our life is turned upside down by circumstances beyond our control. Let me give us an example of what happened to the children of Israel. God spoke to Moses in the burning bush and God sent him back to Egypt to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So, Moses went just as God had instructed him. Moses and Aaron appeared before Pharaoh and they told Pharaoh exactly what God had said, that Pharaoh should let the children of Israel go, which means Pharaoh should set free the children of Israel from their slavery to the Egyptians. You all know the story. Pharaoh said, who is God? that I will let Israel go. I do not know such a God at all. And on top of that, Pharaoh then increased the hardship level of the children of Israel. Instead of providing straws for them to make bricks, Pharaoh requested them to go and be getting the straws and be making the same number of bricks every day. The hardship was really, really serious. So in Exodus chapter 5, verses 15 to 21, you will see how the leaders of the children of Israel spoke to Pharaoh, saying, why have you done this to us? Why? So Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 5, verse 17, told them, you are idle, idle. Therefore, you say, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Therefore, go now and work, for no straw shall be given you. Yet you shall deliver the quota of bricks. You shall make the same number of bricks. Verse 19, and the officers of the children of Israel saw that they were in trouble. After it was told them, you shall not reduce any bricks from your daily quota. Then as they came out from Pharaoh, they met Moses and Aaron, who stood there to meet them. So Moses and Aaron had come to find out what Pharaoh had told them in response to their request that they should still be provided with straws. This is what the officers of the children of Israel said to Moses and Aaron in verse 21, Exodus chapter 5. So they said to Moses and Aaron, let the Lord look on you and judge because you have made us abhorrent, hateful, hated in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants to put a sword in their hand to kill us. This is the kind of situation that they face from time to time in their relationship with God. And it makes them to doubt the faithfulness of God. Even this affected Moses emotionally. 
So in Exodus chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on these people? Why is it you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, Pharaoh has done evil to these people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. Of course, Moses knows that God is always faithful. But the turn of event was so starkly different to what they were all expecting based on God's faithfulness. They were all expecting a quick victory. They were all expecting an easy victory based on their understanding of God's faithfulness. They were all expecting their slavery to end in the twinkle of an eye based on their understanding of God's faithfulness. What they experienced instead was additional and prolonged hardship in the hands of Pharaoh. From now on, throughout their relationship with God, the children of Israel would constantly question and doubt the faithfulness of God anytime they faced difficult circumstances beyond their control. The experience of the children of Israel, times of hardship and disappointments, is what we will all experience in our relationship with God from time to time. As God's born-again children through Christ Jesus, we can never avoid the ups and downs of life, no matter how much we love God, no matter how obedient we are, and no matter the strength of our faith. Thankfully, the Lord Jesus tells us something in John chapter 16, verse 33, even though sometimes we choose not to remember what the Lord Jesus tells us in John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So very clearly, the Lord Jesus tells us that despite the faithfulness of God towards us, in the world we will have tribulation. There will be ups and downs. There will be times of hardship and times of disappointments. This is the nature of the world. But often we tend to forget that that is what we already know. So we thank God. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, with which we opened today's broadcast, the Bible encourages us, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So when we are going through hardship, when we are going through circumstances that cause us to be disappointed, the Bible is saying to us, don't question the faithfulness of God. This is the reality of earthly life. Hold fast to your confession, to your faith in God. Remember that God who has promised us exceedingly great promises, he is faithful. He is faithful. So today, we want to look at God's faithfulness. And the question is, what is it about the faithfulness of God that we must always depend on at all times? Whether times are good or bad, whether we are happy or sad, what is it about the faithfulness of God that we must always depend on at all times? Come with me into today's full broadcast then. There are five key words describing God's faithfulness in the Bible. They are words that describe 
God's faithfulness from the perspective of God. Because often we want to relate to God from our own human perspective, from what we see, from what we feel. But quite clearly, anything that has to do with God, we must look at it from the point of view of God, from God's perspective. How does God describe his own faithfulness? Because when we know how God describes his faithfulness, certainly we will be in a better position to enjoy the faithfulness of God, no matter our circumstances in life. There are certain words that God uses to describe his faithfulness in the Bible. There are five words that God uses to describe his faithfulness in the Bible. The first word is emet, E-M-E-T, emet. The word emet occurs 127 times and it means faithfulness. It means that God is true to himself and to his words. God is true to himself and to his words. In Genesis chapter 12, for instance, God calls Abraham to himself and God gives Abraham incredible promises about giving him land, giving him innumerable descendants and blessing the world through him. And one of the principal promises was that Abraham would, would have a son Abraham would have a son. But as time went on, even though God called Abraham when Abraham was 75 years old, as time went on, the promise that God made to Abraham and Sarah of having a son did not come to pass. In fact, it did not happen until Abraham was a hundred years old and Sarah was 90 years old. By the passage of time, it became clear to Abraham and Sarah that, humanly speaking, they were no longer in the situation to produce any child, to bear any child at all. They had become too old biologically to have any child. But the Bible tells us that when their hope is gone, they keep hoping against hope. They keep trusting that God is faithful. So after 25 years, God finally grants his promise to Abraham and Sarah. Amen. The same thing happened in the life of Isaac. When Isaac married Rebekah, they could not have a child. And remember, these are supposed to be people through whom the Lord would bless the whole world. People who would have many descendants. Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah. And he continued to pray and trust in the Lord for the following 20 years. Isaac and Rebekah finally had their twin boys, Esau and Jacob, when Isaac was 60 years old. So you see, if it was God being faithful according to the feelings of Abraham or Isaac, then God is not faithful. But emet, that word emet, simply means that God is faithful to himself. God is true to himself. Think about it as well. Jacob, the son of Isaac, had to run away from home and he faced many challenges. Challenges that would threaten the promises of God that God made to Abraham, Isaac, and even Jacob himself, that God will bless them. 
But as you see at the very end, the promises of God for Esau, I mean for Jacob, also came to pass. If Jacob was going to look at the promises of God purely from his own sight, purely from his own feelings, Jacob would say God was not faithful to him. But remember, anytime you are looking at the characteristic or traits of God, you must look at those characteristics or traits from the perspective of God. Our feelings will deceive us. Walking by sight, by what we see, will deceive us. That's why if we are going to enjoy the faithfulness of God, we must look at it from the perspective of God. And that's why we are starting with the word emet, E-M-E-T, which describes God's faithfulness as God being true to himself. God is always true to himself. So throughout the scriptures, Emet shows us that God will always be true to himself and to his words. Often, we want God to be true to us no matter what. Often, we think that God's faithfulness is shown when he is true to us according to our own human logic, according to our feelings, according to what we see, according to what we think. But that is never the case. Anytime we are looking at God's faithfulness from our own logic, God is never going to be faithful. Never. He will not appear to be faithful at all. That's why we need to look at God's faithfulness from the point of view of God. And one of the five words that describe God's faithfulness in the Bible is this word, emet, E-M-E-T. God is faithful because God will always be true to himself. God's faithfulness simply means that God will always be true to himself. God is all-knowing, all-wise, and always good. In his faithfulness, God will always be true to himself. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. If we are faithless, God remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. If we are faithless, God remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So, can I just encourage all of us, always remember that no matter what you are passing through, no matter your feelings, God will always be true to himself. Let that give you joy. Let that give you faith that in his faithfulness, God will always be true to himself. He will be true to his words. God is all-knowing all wise and always good in all our circumstances. Amen. Let's look at the second word that the Bible uses to describe God's faithfulness. The second word that the Bible uses is the word emuna, E-M-U-N-A, emuna. What does emuna mean? And how many times does this word occur to describe God's faithfulness? Emuna occurs 49 times in the Bible, and it means steadiness and reliability. Steadiness and reliability. Think about the time when Moses went on the mountain whilst Joshua was fighting against the Amalekites. You see that story in Exodus chapter 17. So Joshua and the children of Israel, 
they were fighting against the Amalekites in the valley. Anytime Moses held, us, held up his hands on the mountain, Joshua and the children of Israel would prevail. But as soon as the hands of Moses were lowered, then the Amalekites would start winning. In order to ensure that the children of Israel would prevail against the Amalekites, Aaron and all, they put a stone under each hand of Moses. And then Moses was able to rest his hands on Aaron and all. So they start on the stone and Moses put his hands on Aaron and all. That way, the Bible states that Moses' hands were steady and reliable throughout the battle. And therefore, God used that to defeat the children, to, to defeat the Amalekites. God used that to make Joshua and the children of Israel to win the battle against the Amalekites. So anytime you are thinking of Emuna, that is the kind of picture we have about the faithfulness of God, steady and reliable throughout our lifetime. Steady and reliable throughout our lifetime. So you will find in the Bible that the Bible says, God's emuna reaches to the skies, Psalm 36, verse 5. God's emuna, which means God's faithfulness, is from morning till nightfall, Psalm 92, verse 2. And that when God comes to judge the world, it will be in righteousness and faithfulness. It will be in emuna, Psalm 96, verse 13. So you see, this connection of righteousness and faithfulness occurs multiple times in the Bible. Deuteronomy 32, 4, 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 23, Psalms 40, verse 11, 119, verse 75, Psalm 138, Psalm 143, Verse 1, Isaiah 11, 5. So anytime you are thinking about Emuna, you are thinking about the faithfulness of God that is complete with his righteousness, which doing what is right. The faithfulness of God that is steady and reliable. The faithfulness of God that is steady and reliable. So you see, God's faithfulness, faithfulness in our life will not always or immediately produce circumstances that bring us joy or satisfaction. God's faithfulness in our life will not always or immediately produce circumstances that bring us joy or satisfaction. But we must remember, no matter what we are going through, that God's character is constantly steady and reliable. Why? Because God's faithfulness is a muna. God's faithfulness demonstrates reliability and steadiness. It demonstrates God's steadfast love for each one of us in Christ Jesus. So anytime we are going through whatever circumstances that we face, whether those circumstances give us joy or sadness, and we are thinking about the faithfulness of God, we will only enjoy the faithfulness of God when we remember the word emet, and now when we remember the word emuna. Emuna is about the steadfast love of God. God is steady. God is steadfast. God is reliable at all times. No matter what is happening, God is reliable at all times. So this should give us joy and faith that God's faithfulness will never ever fail. 
Emuna should tell us that God's faithfulness will never ever fail. God's faithfulness is far more steady and reliable than a mountain. If we know God's faithfulness is emuna, then we must never walk by what we see or feel. Anytime we are thinking about our circumstances and whether God is faithful or not, remember emuna. Don't walk by what you feel or what you see. Just remember that God's faithfulness is reliable and steadfast all through our lifetime. So we must walk by faith. Otherwise, we won't enjoy the faithfulness of God. Let me take us to the third word that the Bible uses to describe the faithfulness of God. The third word is a seed. H-E-S-E-D, a seed. That word, a seed, occurs 255 times in the Bible. It occurs 255 times in the Bible. It means kindness, loving kindness, or mercy. It means kindness, loving kindness, or mercy. So God's faithfulness is actually embedded in his kindness, in his loving kindness. God cannot but be faithful because God is loving and kind. So no matter what we are passing through, when we remember that God is always loving and kind, then we will enjoy the faithfulness of God. This third word, a seed, describes God's faithfulness to his people based on his covenantal relationship to them. So you can say that the word a seed also means covenant loyalty. Covenant loyalty or covenant faithfulness. So in general terms, God is faithful to all his creation. But in a very privileged sense, God is faithful to those with whom he has a covenant. If we can put it this way, God is extra faithful. Amen. That is just to make us to understand that when we are God's born again children, we have this special and privileged relationship with God that should make us to know that God's faithfulness is underpinned by his covenant loyalty, his covenant loving kindness. So you see, since it was God who took the initiative to enter into a covenant relationship with his people, no matter what the people do, God will always remember the covenant to perform it out of mercy, out of love, out of loving kindness. It is guaranteed that God will always be faithful to his covenant. Therefore, throughout the Bible, God declares that he shows covenant loyalty to a thousand generations of those who are truly is. We are God's born again children. We are truly God's children because of the perfect work of Christ on the cross. The sacrificial work of Christ on the cross. Christ shed his blood for us on the cross. Christ died for us. The sinless one died for the sinful ones. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been brought back to God. We are reconciled to God. God's Holy Spirit dwells in us. The Bible says, those who believe in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus has given them the authority to become the children of God. Children who are not born, 
by the desire of a human parent for children who are born by the will of God himself, by the initiative of God in Christ Jesus. So that means before we were created, before we were conceived, before we were born, God in Christ Jesus predestined us to be his children. He adopted us to be his children in Christ Jesus. So anytime we are talking about the faithfulness of God, remember this third word, a seed, H-E-S-E-D, a seed. And a seed means covenant loyalty. A seed means loving kindness. A seed means steadfast love on the part of God. A seed tells us that it is guaranteed that God will always be faithful to his covenant. In Psalm 136, the psalmist celebrates God's loyalty to his people. When God brought them out of the land of Egypt, when God fed them and protected them in the wilderness, when God brought them into the promised land, despite all their stubbornness, despite all their sinfulness, the seed of God's faithfulness guaranteed that God will perform his covenant one way or another. Think about it. In Psalm 51, David was praying concerning the seed of God, God's covenant faithfulness. David had sinned by committing adultery with Bathsheba and killing Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. This was something that God thoroughly rebuked David for. But David, knowing what it means to grieve God, repented immediately and sought the face of God in prayer. And the prayer is what we find in Psalm 51. The whole of that psalm is actually appealing to the covenant loyalty of God, to the steadfast love of God, the whole of that psalm. David asks for forgiveness after his adultery with Bathsheba based on God's loyal love. When we look at what the prophet Micah has to say in Micah chapter 7, verses 19 to 20, we would even understand more the practical aspects of God's loving kindness in the sense that he is more than willing to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to forgive us all our sins and restore us to his favor. Micah chapter 7, verses 19 to 20, verses 18 to 20. Micah chapter 7 verses 18 to 20. Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but you delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot. You will hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea, you will be faithful to Jacob. You will be a seed to Jacob. You will show your love to Abraham, even as you have pledged on oath to our ancestors in days long ago. It's important for us to look at God's faithfulness from the point of view of God, if we are going to enjoy his faithfulness no matter our circumstances. If we are never again going to doubt God's faithfulness, we must always look at God's faithfulness from God's point of view. God's covenant loyalty will not always prevent us from facing the ups and downs of life. We know that Jesus has already told us that God's covenant loyalty will not always prevent us from facing the ups and downs of life. 
God's covenant loyalty will not always prevent us from facing the consequences of our conduct. Whether we chose rightly or wrongly, there will always be consequences to our choices. And God's exceed faithfulness, God's covenant faithfulness, God's loving kindness will not always prevent us from facing the consequences of our conduct. But we thank God. His exceed faithfulness, his covenant loyalty is always on our side. Amen. God is always on our side, no matter what we are going through. Even when we have sinned against him, God is still on our side because God's faithfulness is a seed faithfulness, his covenant loyalty, his covenant loving kindness, his steadfast love. So you see, if we know that God's faithfulness is a seed, if we know that God's faithfulness is covenant loyalty, we must constantly run towards him, especially in those times when we have sinned. If we know that God's faithfulness is a seed faithfulness, his covenant loyalty, his covenant loving kindness, if we know that God's faithfulness is his steadfast love, we must constantly run towards towards him, especially when we have sinned, especially when we are going through difficult times. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, help us to understand the faithfulness of God from his point of view. Then we will be in a position to enjoy his faithfulness, no matter our circumstances. Let's go on quickly to the fourth word of God's faithfulness in the Bible. Remember that today the broadcast is about enjoying the faithfulness of God. And we are looking at God's faithfulness from the point of view of God himself. We are looking at specific words that the Bible uses to describe God's faithfulness. Word number four, the fourth word that the Bible uses is zakah, Z-A-C-A-R. Z-A-C-A-R, zakah. The word zakah occurs about 235 times in the Bible. It is usually used alongside God's faithfulness in moments when the Bible says God remembers his promises, God remembers his covenant. So Zaka is the word for remember. That word Zaka does not suggest that God has somehow forgotten something. Zaka doesn't mean that God needs to be reminded of something. Because if we are thinking that way, we are thinking from our own human point of view again. But Zaka is trying to tell us that whatever God has promised us is constantly present in his mind. And no matter how long it takes, no matter the obstacles in the way, God will act on his word. God will act on his character. God will act on his promises. God will act on his covenant. God will remember his faithfulness. Amen. So Zaka is to allow us as human beings to know that God doesn't forget what he has promised. God will remember his word, his covenant, his promises. So Zaka describes God's faithfulness, especially in those circumstances when we think God has forgotten about us. Zaka makes us to understand 
that God never forgets us. And humanly speaking, we can remind God of his covenant or the promises that he gave to us, humanly speaking. Why? Because God never forgets. Amen. Amen. The first place where we see the word zakah used to describe God's faithfulness is in Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. God remembers Noah and the animals in the boat or the ark after God had destroyed the earth with the flood. God remembers Noah. When you look at the end of chapter 7, Genesis chapter 7, you will see how bleak the situation was for the whole of creation. How very bleak, how very hopeless the situation was for the whole of creation. But thank God, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, the word Zaka occurs. God remembers Noah. And this time, it is in relation to God's faithfulness. It is in relation to God's faithfulness. So you see in Genesis chapter 9, verse 16, we then read that God sets the rainbow in the sky as the sign of his covenant, never to destroy creation again by a flood. God states that when he sees the rainbow, he will remember the everlasting covenant that he made with his creation. So one of the main motivations that drove God to deliver his people out of slavery to the Egyptians, if you remember very well how the Bible describes it, the Bible uses the word zaka, that God remembered his covenant God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So God's faithfulness is always accompanied, is always embedded in the very fact that God is never forgetful about what he has spoken to us. God is never forgetful about his promises. No matter how long it takes, Remember how in Hebrews chapter 6, the Bible says, God is not unjust that he will forget our labor of love. That is a description of the faithfulness of God. God is not unjust that he will do what? He will forget our labor of love, that he will forget our obedience, our faith. God is not unjust. So any time that we are going through difficulties where we want to question the faithfulness of God, remember this important word that describes the perspective of God about his own faithfulness. And what is this fourth word? Zaka, which means God always remembers his promises. He always remembers his word. He always remembers his covenant. That's why we should never think that God will ever be unfaithful. God never forgets. Amen. He never forgets his promises. Amen. So in Psalm 105 and Psalm 106, the psalmist recalls numerous occasions in the history of the children of Israel when God remembered his covenant promises made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Zaka is an important description of God's faithfulness that God will never forget what he has promised. Amen. When you look at Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 60, where God says, I will give them a new heart. I will give them a new covenant. It also says it is because God remembered his people. He remembered the covenant he had made with them in their youth. And though they failed, they failed God several times 
God remembered the covenant that he had made and he decided to make another covenant with them. Another covenant that will be based on the blood of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Another covenant that will be far, 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 far superior to the first covenant which he made with them. Amen. Amen. So always think about Zaka when you are going through difficult periods. Don't question the faithfulness of God. Think about the fact that God is faithful because he constantly has us on his mind. He constantly has us on his mind. So you see, God's faithfulness as Zaka encourages us to face all our circumstances in the certainty that our life is in the hands of God who never ever forgets about us. Let me say that again. We don't need to question the faithfulness of God when we remember the word Zaka. Zaka tells us that God's faithfulness is always there no matter the circumstances we face. We have the certainty that our life is in the hands of God who never ever forgets about us. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 27 to 28. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 27 to 28. God is speaking to the children of Israel here. Why do you say, O Jacob, why do you speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. So when you are passing through situation where you feel God has forgotten you, God is saying, remember Zaka. God's faithfulness is embedded in his character of remembering us, remembering his promises, remembering his covenant, no matter how long, no matter the obstacles in the way. Amen. Come with me to Isaiah chapter 49, verses 14 to 15. Isaiah 49, verses 14 to 15. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget a nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. Amen. I will not forget you. I will always remember you. It's the same thing that the psalmist is saying in Psalm 8, verses 3 to 4. Psalm 8, verses 3 to 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Because of the special covenant relationship we have with God through Christ Jesus, God's mind is constantly full of us. God's mind is constantly on us. Never let us doubt the faithfulness of God. Never let us think, oh, because of what we are going through, maybe God is no longer faithful. No. The word Zaka tells us that God is constantly remembering us in his loving kindness, in his faithfulness. When we know the connection of God's faithfulness to his constant remembrance of his fatherly love for us in Christ Jesus, then we can constantly trust that God is working out all things in our life for our good. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Let's finish on the final word, the fifth word for God's faithfulness in the Bible. The fifth word for God's faithfulness in the Bible is pistos, P-I-S-T-O-S, pistos. This is the Greek word that is used for God's faithfulness in the New Testament. It occurs 67 times. It's about the fact that God is always dependable. God is always dependable and trustworthy. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged God faithful who had promised. The word that is used there is pistols. She believed, she knew, she trusted that God was always dependable and trustworthy because she judged God faithful who had promised. God is always dependable and trustworthy. God's faithfulness is most clearly revealed through the Lord Jesus Christ. God's faithfulness is most clearly revealed through the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything we have spoken about the faithfulness of God applies to the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5, Jesus is described as the faithful witness. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 13, Jesus is, is described as the faithful one. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 14, Jesus is described as the faithful and true witness. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, Jesus is called faithful and true. Because of the reliability of the work of Christ when it comes to our salvation, the reliability of his work as our Savior, all the promises of God is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. All the promises of God they are all yes and amen in Christ Jesus. You see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. If we are going to enjoy the faithfulness of God, let us remember very clearly, we are God's born-again children because of Christ Jesus. God is guaranteed to be faithful no matter what we are passing through. Don't let us walk according to our feelings. Don't let us walk according to what we see. Don't even let us walk according to our human knowledge. But let us walk according to what God describes concerning himself and his faithfulness. Let's walk according to the fact that the faithfulness of God is a muna. The faithfulness of God is a met. The faithfulness of God is a seed. The faithfulness of God is sacker. The faithfulness of God is pistols. And in Christ Jesus, every aspect of the faithfulness of God is revealed to us. Amen. We have to finish. Today's broadcast is about enjoying the faithfulness of God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. When we truly understand God's faithfulness from God's perspective, we will never doubt that God is good to us, no matter what we are going through in life. We will never doubt that God is faithful. Emet tells us that God is faithful 
Emuna tells us that God is faithful. A seed tells us that God is faithful. Zaka tells us that God is faithful. Pistos tells us that God is faithful. These five words, they describe the faithfulness of God from his own perspective. Don't let us use our limited human knowledge, our limited human understanding to judge the faithfulness of God. When we do so, we are not going to enjoy the faithfulness of God. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit allow each one of us to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. When we truly understand God's faithfulness from God's perspective, then we will never doubt his goodness in our life. He who promised is faithful. We can count on God. We can count on his word. For the word of the Lord holds true in every generation, in every country, in every culture, in every circumstance. The word of God holds true. And we can trust everything that God does. We can trust everything that God does. Even though in our own human thinking, we might be feeling the pain or the shame or the delay or the disappointment. But let us switch from our own human thinking to the perspective of God. Let us say to ourselves, we know that God is always faithful. But the word of the Lord holds true. The word of God holds true. And we can trust everything that God does. You see this in Psalm 33, verse 4. May this grant you hope in every situation today. We can stand. We can walk. We can sleep, we can wake secure in this very truth. God is trustworthy to keep his word. In sickness, in health, in poverty, in riches. Whether it rains or shines, no matter what the day looks like, we can stand secure in this truth. God is trustworthy to keep his word. Amen. When we truly understand God's faithfulness from God's perspective, then we will find the strength to endure any hardship. And we will find the faith to trust that God is working out all things for our good. This is where we finish today's broadcast. When we truly understand God's faithfulness from his own perspective, then we will be able to stand no matter what we are faced with. We will find the strength to endure. We will find the faith to believe God for the best, no matter what is going on in our life. Amen. Let me say a big thank you to everyone for watching this broadcast. A big thank you to everyone for listening to this broadcast until another occasion on this platform. I remain your host, Pastor Dr. Kemi Atanda Hillary, the General Overseer of Living Hope Church. I love you, for God loves you much, much more. May God bless you. Bye for now. Bye.